In this video, we're going to spend some time looking at sales order statuses, which is a very powerful but often misunderstood feature of BrightPearl. So what we're going to do is set up a very simple set of sales order statuses first, and then process the sales order using these statuses. And then what we'll do is add a back order status and connect that into the workflow. Then we'll add a draft quote and quote sent workflow, which might be used for sending estimates and then finally give tips for setting up your own workflow. This is my sales list, where I can see the sales on different statuses by this colourful column down the middle, due to process, in progress, completed, and so on. If I wanted to show sales on just one status, I could filter it up at the top right, which is exactly the same as if I'd used the sales menu. So if we go sales, due to process, we'll only see our due to process sales. Also on the sales dashboard, you can see a count of all the different sales on each of their statuses. So this is a very simple set of order statuses. We've got due to process, in progress, on hold, completed, and cancelled. And the complexity of your order statuses really depends on how many people you've got working on your sales. Here we've got a very simple inbox concept, which is due to process. And sales created from any online channel are automatically created on due to process, or you might create manual sales orders on due to process. It's then someone's job to take those sales and put them as in progress. Once they're in progress, we can see exactly what's going on with something we call system statuses, which is different from order statuses. And you can see the system statuses using the sales menu on the right hand side. We've got allocation status, whether it's not allocated, part allocated, or all allocated whether it's been fulfilled or not, and whether it's been shipped or not. So don't create your own sales order statuses for these system statuses, because these are driven by data, whereas a sales order status can be chosen by a user and could therefore potentially be wrong. So what we'll do now is create a new sale, put it in due to process, and then work through this workflow. So we'll start by going new quote. Even though we're not actually going to quote the customer, this is the best way to create a new sale. And you'll see that the new sale is created on due to process. We'll add an item. We've got one in stock. We'll set a price of 25 and then save. We can see that the order has not yet been allocated. It's not been fulfilled or it's not been shipped. As a salesperson, what I'm going to do is fulfill this order to create a goods out note and then I'm going to put it into progress because my job is now done. So I'm going to fulfill and ship later, which creates the goods out note. We can see that the order is now all allocated and all fulfilled. So let's mark it as in progress. My job is now done. I can now move on to the next sale and let the warehouse team pick up. What they'll do is they'll go to the sales and ship the goods out note. So as a warehouse person, Let's go and find those goods out notes. Here's the one we just created, which I would print, pick, pack and ship. But for now, let's just ship it. Which removes it from this list. And if we now go back to that sale, we'll see that it's all been shipped by the colored truck icon here. It's still in progress, however, because I've not yet taken payment or invoiced it. So at the end of the day, what I'd like to do is find all sales that are still in progress that have been fully shipped. I'm not going to worry about payment because a number of customers have credit, so we'll take payment later. So what we need to do is find all sales in progress, and then filter this to only show those that have been all shipped. And you can see how here we can use a combination of sales order statuses and system statuses to get exactly what we need. So here are the sales that have all been shipped that I'd then want to invoice. So I can select all of those and click invoice. I won't send an email to the customer because they've already had the order confirmation from my sales channel. Invoicing the orders is the only point in this process which automatically updates the status. And you can see because we're filtering to show in progress sales, there are no more left. Going back to my sales list, we can see that these sales have now been completed. They all have an invoice number and the status has been automatically updated to completed. Even though these orders are not yet paid, that's okay, 
because the actual invoice is now transferred into my accounting system and these customers and their invoices will be on the accounts receivable screen. So the order is complete and it's now transitioned into the accounting side of things. So what you saw there were a few sales that were automatically updated to a status of completed once they were invoiced. And you can set Brightpool up to do this from the setup area and then sales and sales workflow. If we scroll down, we can see when it's invoiced, update the sale to whichever status you choose. And here we've got completed. This is also where you'll find other workflow settings which we'll come to shortly in this video. I'm now going to introduce you to two new things, one of which is bulk processing, and the other is a new sales order status I've just created called on hold stock, which you might also call back order. And when a sale can't all ship together, I'm going to park it, I'm going to put it onto this status. Whereas the sales that can be all fulfilled right now, I'm going to put through to in progress. So from my sales list, I'll select all of the sales which are due to process. We can see the one at the top of the list here has been partially allocated. It was created by my sales team because I can see the channel is telephone sales. And these two have come in from my eBay store and all inventory is available so everything's been allocated. This means that only these bottom two will be fulfilled because we can't fulfill the top one all at once. So let's click fulfill. Fulfill and ship later. We'll update the fulfilled orders to in progress and then fulfill. Those two orders have now been fulfilled and they've been updated automatically to in progress. However, this one that we don't have all the inventory for, I need to update manually to on hold. So let's go update status, choose order status, on hold. On hold due to stock issues. If I wanted to at this point, I could actually email the customer to say items are out of stock and you'd create a template to use there. So let's update those orders. We now have no orders left on due to process. Every now and then, perhaps once a day, perhaps once a week, you'd go and check all of the sales that were on hold due to stock issues. You'd then re-attempt to fulfill these, and if inventory became available, it would automatically move to in progress. This way it's easy to see from the sales dashboard how many sales you have on hold due to stock issues. And here we've got £576 that can't ship. Next we're going to create two new statuses to deal with quotes or estimates. The first status will be quote that's in draft and the second will be a quote that's been sent to the customer so we can see how many of our quotes we still are due to send and how many are due to chase. So let's create the first one Let's call it draft quote and let's make it a light grey colour. If an order is sat on this status for more than seven days I'd like a reminder and reminders pop up on the left hand side of the screen. Because it's not yet been sent to the customer I don't want customers to see this if they log into my portal. You don't need to worry about the end of day batch post process setting because Brightpell doesn't use that anymore and we'll create this new status. Then we'll add one for quote sent. And again, if it's not been updated in five days, I want to chase. So a reminder will appear on the left hand side. This one I do want customers to see if they log into my portal. And let's make it a lime green colour. We've now got the two statuses at the top of the list. And if I wanted to change the order, I can just drag them around. Now we need to make sure that when we send an email, Brightpool automatically updates the order status to quote sent. And we'll do this in the setup area under sales, sales workflow. And when a quote or order is emailed, update the status to quote sent and then save changes. Okay, so now let's use these statuses. We're going to create a new order. I just click new quote, choose the customer, Add some items, let's say 10 hubs at £40 and save changes. I might want to leave this as draft quote until I send it while I'm still building it so that other staff members don't start to process it. So let's just save that. 
and all the status changes are being logged on the Notes and Payment History tab. When I actually email the quote to the customer, it takes me back to the Order Edit screen where I can see it's been automatically updated to Quote Sent. Then when the customer comes back and says, yep, great, good to go, I'll have these hubs please, they'd phone me up and then I'd update it to due to process. I might also fulfill it if I have inventory available, or if that's not my job, I'll let someone else work through the due to process orders. So the last thing we're going to do in this video is just give you some tips for when you're creating your own sales order statuses. So order statuses are for temporary information. It really just shows where the order is in the workflow. And if you need to assign permanent information to a sales order, use something like custom fields or the fields that are already in Brightpearl, such as channel, lead source, and things like that. On a similar note, don't use order statuses if there's already a filter for that kind of information. Have a look at the sales order list filters and see what's there. So don't create order statuses for sales channels. Don't create statuses to show if an order is invoiced or shipped. And if you want to, you can use custom fields for extra filters. When you're setting remind days, only set ones you're actually going to use so that when the reminders do pop up, they're really important to action. And then lastly, just keep it simple. You'll find yourself using it much more if it's simple and easy to use. So that takes us to the end of the video that introduces you to the concepts of order statuses.